Hi everyone and welcome to this video on teamwork skills. My name is Dr. Marian Eberlim. I am an Associate Professor of Management at the Milgard School of Business at UW Tacoma. And what I would like to do with this video is to highlight how collaboration skills or teamwork skills are really critical for someone like you who is pursuing or thinking about pursuing a career in a STEM field or in business analytics in particular. Now I talk about teamwork skills and you're interested in STEM, you're interested in business analytics and you might be thinking right now, like, wait, what, teamwork skills? Um, I didn't think that soft skills would be something that I needed to be worrying about. What I want to do in this video is to highlight that, yes, you should be thinking about developing your teamwork skills alongside with all the other quantitative skills in math, um, statistics, um, engineering, and so forth, of course, that are also very much the foundation for your career. But in addition to that, you don't want to lose sight of a whole other set of skills on the what we call on the softer side that are also really critically important for a career in business analytics. So we generally regard business analytics as a team sport as someone who may be working in data science and data scientist kind of role, you will never be working on your own. You will be working with lots of other different people. Sure, some of them might also be data scientists heavily involved in the data analytical piece of things, but you will also be working with many others who you may not share expertise with. You may be working with your internal clients who would like to make decisions based off of your analyses. You might work with the people who are actually um, employed to collect the data that you need. So you're gonna work with lots and lots of different people. Now, this is just an example here. Um, you might be part of a team in an organization and the organization is tasking you with this particular question, which is, hey, we have an employment application form that people need to fill out. Of course, nowadays, not so much in paper, oftentimes online, but we ask, ask all of these questions and we want to know are any of these questions better than other questions. Like, are there some questions that we simply shouldn't be asking because it really doesn't help us in distinguishing a future good performer from a future poor performer. And so you're being tasked with analyzing this or answering this question and collecting and analyzing data with regards to it. Now, the question is who should become part of this effort? It's not just going to be you, but you would also be working with, for example, the data engineers who actually collect this kind of data, um, software engineers who actually um, program the application that is needed to collect this kind of data and might also develop tools later on uh, to support the analysis of the data and the visualization of the data and so forth. You're surely going to be working with subject matter experts, the people in HR and human resources who do the actual hiring. You might work with social scientists who do research in this area. You might work with legal experts uh, because clearly employment law and there are some legal implications related to this question. Um, you're going to have to collect performance data so that you can actually able to see, hey, if I ask people about their prior experience with working in teams, does that response actually distinguish a future good performer from a future poor performer? Um, well, then I need performance data of the employees who currently work for me. And so you work with those individuals in human resources and management who have that kind of data and can make sense of it. So clearly this is a multidisciplinary effort. Now, um, I have a couple of examples here at Airbnb, for example, data scientists are actually evaluated on their ability to work in teams. And at IBM, they're also really thoughtful around um, putting together data science teams where people have different skill sets and can complement each other. And so both of those examples, again, highlight how teamwork is very relevant to business analytics and therefore something you would want to pay attention to as well to develop in that area. Now, the bad news is the teams consistently underperform and many people are not good at working in teams. 
Richard Hackman, who was a famous sort of in our um, in our uh, academic uh, context, famous for his research in, on teamwork. He says, I have no question that a team can generate magic, but don't count on it. So that kind of highlights oftentimes the concerns that emerge in teams. And so think about some of the past teamwork experiences that you have had. I've listed a few questions here for you to kind of contemplate. Just to summarize a couple here, have you ever had an idea in a team setting, but you chose not to express it, to not share it with the rest of the team because you were worried that maybe the idea wasn't good enough? Have you ever agreed to something because you thought everyone else on the team wanted to do this and you were the only one who had concerns and because of that you chose not to express those concerns? Have you ever listened to somebody else's idea and immediately dismissed that idea as silly and, and weird and unimportant? So these questions, many of us can say, can say yes to. Yes, I've experienced that. Yes, I have held back. And in all of those instances, there was an opportunity lost for the team to thrive and for the team to improve and for the team to truly create synergies. Now, you might have heard already of this term groupthink, and that's not a good thing. A groupthink is a negative phenomenon that happens in teams when the team really doesn't critically think through all of its ideas and therefore arrives at a subpar solution. And there are so many different reasons why this may happen. Now, and we do commonly see it happen in teams, and this is something to be avoided. Now, the good news is that there are many tools available to learn about effective teamwork and to implement it and to improve. So Richard Hackman, again, there are many different ways to create the conditions for effectiveness, to sustain them, and to help teams take full advantage of them. So we can learn about it because there are many great people out there like Richard Hackman who have studied this phenomenon and who know a whole lot about teamwork and who can teach us how to become better team players. Now, again, thinking about your past teamwork experiences, I'd like you to reflect on maybe the positive things that have happened to you in those team settings. Have you ever been able to solve a problem as a team that you think by yourself you would have never been able to do that? Of course, that's one of the major reasons why we put teams together. And when that happens, it can be quite engaging and motivating. Have you ever been part of a team where you really got along with everyone else and at the same time you continue to challenge each other to improve and to do better? Have you ever been part of a team where ideas were readily bounced off of each other and there was that energy and that burstiness, we call it burstiness, burstiness in the team that really made the team more creative? Those are, of course, many of the reasons for why we put teams together. And we wanna make sure that these moments happen and so when we think about learning how to have collaboration skills, it's a lot about our own individual behavior and also a lot about creating the conditions where the entire team can succeed. When we think then about teamwork, it has a lot to do with improving the conditions under which this kind of synergy can take place. We want to improve process gains, right? When we put people together in a team, we want the sum to be greater than its parts. So something is to be gained from people working together. And whatever that gain is, we call that the process gains in teamwork. And at the same time, we want to avoid all these negative things that we kind of reflected on, like the group think dynamics, not wanting to speak up, simply agreeing because it's easier to do, those kinds of things. We call those process losses. They will happen in a team. But our goal is to maximize the process gains and to minimize the process losses. And learning about effective teamwork will help you to understand that and to help you understand what your individual role is in that process. So to sum things up, business analytics requires a mix of skills. As you prepare for a career in business analytics, don't just focus on the obvious. Of course, you need that strong quantitative analytical foundation. There is absolutely no doubt about that. 
In addition to that, though, also think about advancing your education in the other softer areas, in those areas where you're being challenged, where you're improving your, or rather raising your curiosity, where you're challenging yourself and others to critically think, where you're being introduced to new ideas and new perspectives, and where you learn to view the world from other people's eyes. If you do that, and you continue to do that in your educational journey, you're really setting yourself up for success in terms of being able to work with a diverse group of people, where you then continue that practice of critically thinking, critically debating your own as well as others' ideas, where you're able to find your own voice and speak up about your ideas, even if they're not all that well fleshed out yet where you're able to contribute to creating those synergies in a teamwork setting. Thank you.